DJ Sly, D, DJ Sly, Tay, 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 DJ Sly, D, DJ. Hello, hello, hello. What's happening? How you doing? I'm good. Just getting off work. <laughs> Oh, just getting all work, putting that day yeah. in, huh? Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. We all got to gotta make it do what it do, you know? Absolutely. That's the grind for you right there. Putting in work, an artist, the hustle. How bad do you want it? You know what I'm saying? You do whatever you have to to make it happen. That's right. That's right. You ready to go ahead and get it popping? Absolutely. Let's roll. All right, 2021 Convo Live and Direct, man. We got to get some love to our sponsors, Bel Air. Head over to your favorite liquor store, grab your favorite bottle of Bel Air, and always make sure that you drink responsibly. Please do that. I need, Absolutely. I need everybody to go and follow right now on Instagram at myjet.doc. That's M Y J E T. DOC, it's a virtual urgent care app connecting users with licensed medical professionals instantly, no waiting room, no insurance, and you can save up to 85% off of RX. Go check that out. Right now, 2021 Convo Live and Direct with MIA, the Rhapsodist. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Feeling good, feeling good, man. We definitely want to thank you for taking the time to get on with us. We know you got a busy schedule, but we appreciate no, I thank you. you for the opportunity. We appreciate you giving us your time. Um, we always like to start the convos out when we chop it up with artists. We like to go back to their childhood. So tell us, the audience, how was things for you growing up as a child? Um, I was a little bit of a... I guess a tom girl. I would do girly things, but then I would play basketball. I would ride my bike, do tricks on my bike. So I did a little bit of everything when I was a little kid. Probably my mom didn't like none of what I did because I always gave her a heart attack. <laughs> but, yeah, I was a very active child. Okay. Played piano, played clarinet, did dance. So I did all everything when I was little. Wow, a lot of a lot of music, musical instruments there. I see. Yes. What was some of the music being played in the household as you was growing up? You know, a lot of the Motown. You know, a lot of Motown, a lot of gospel. Uh, my mom listened to a lot of jazz. Um, she even played uh, the saxophone when she was younger. So, listen to all types of music. Okay. Okay. So we gonna speed up to today. Um, I, I want to know what are you currently listening to? What are some of the music you're listening to right now? Um, right now I'm listening to a lot of Alex Isley. I like her voice. Um, Sabrina Claudio, of course, my old favorites of Sade, Anita Baker. So I mix a little new, a little, a little bit of old. So that's currently what I'm listening to, new, newer artist wise, right now. Okay. Where are you currently from? I'm I'm from Augusta. I'm Augusta, from Georgia. Oh, shoot, yeah. the home of J.B., J. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Wow. Home bread. Okay, okay. How, how does that feel, being from the home of James Brown? I mean, you you know, when you're from the home of James Brown, you got to show out. You go, you know, you got to you got to make it do what it do. I mean, he did it. Yeah, yeah. So you got to you got to show out for your hometown. How would you say the support from your city? Do you get a lot of support from your city? I would say the support that I get, being that I don't, I haven't really been doing much since the pandemic started. You know, I have a a little one that I got to keep in mind, keep her safe. But before the pandemic, I mean, the support was there. Yeah. You know, I think it's all about what you put in. You know, everyone said, well, I don't get any support, but how much work are you, you know, putting in to put yourself out there so you can get the support? Yeah. What is your biggest goal that you have in this music industry? 
I think my biggest goal, I've always wanted to play um, SOBs in New York. Mm. That's, that's one that's that's one of my biggest goals is to play there. Okay. Okay. Um if you could could collab with one single artist, who would that artist be and why? Oh man. I already know right off the top of my head because I she is just like I'm trying to be the next her in a way, but I know I can never be her, but I would love to collab with Janet Jackson. Ooh, Janet Jackson. Why Janet? I mean, as an artist, as a performer, I mean, she's a legend. So mm -hmm. there's a lot that I can learn from her. And a lot of my music, um, I've kind of taken some ideas and sounds from what she put out, like especially her sexy stuff, because that's all I listen to is her sexy stuff. So I kind of base my music around, you know, what she put out in her later career. How, how would you describe the type of music that you make? Um, it's definitely sexy, but it leaves a lot to the imagination. Mm. I don't like to give too much in my music. I want you to listen to it and let it take you on a journey. Okay. What, what's your vibe like when it comes sitting down to creating? What's your creative process in making your music? Uh, I light my incense. I light my candles. I pour a glass of wine. Um, and I just sit and write. And I, let, I may let some soft music play in the background to kind of mellow the mood out, but that's usually my process. Okay. What do you have out right now that we, the audience, should be tapping into? I just released uh, my latest single, Streams of Tears, which is a departure from what I normally do. Uh, this one is a little bit more vulnerable and not as sexy, even though I've heard that it still has a sexy vibe to it. It wasn't in my <laughs> intent. Um, but Streams of Tears is a really important record uh, to me, and it's out on all platforms. How'd you come up with that name? Uh, the song is basically based on me holding in a lot of pain from a previous relationship. Mm. And instead of me being able to really talk about it, it's just, I'm just, it's just tears and tears and tears. So that's kind of how I came up with the, the name of the record. Oh, I got, I got to go check that out. It sounds like you, you get ready to uh, share some stuff with us with this one. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah it's, it's a deep record. It's a yeah. deep record. Can you tell us what is your most useless talent, if you have one? My useless talent? Oh, gosh, I don't know if I, I, I have one. I can't think of anything useless at this moment. I mean, yeah. I do a little so, bit of everything. <laughs> yeah, some, some people don't have one. Some, some people don't have one. Can you tell us about a time when your voice wasn't being heard and how did you feel about that? Um, let's see. I guess the way I was raised, you know, you have old school parents. You don't have no voice, not at all. And I'm a person that I like to tell you how I feel. This is what it is. And not being able to do that for a long time, it's hard because you have to hold a lot of it in when you're not able to really express yourself without fear of either being judged or, you know, whatever the response from the other person would be. So for a while, I just wrote. I started off, you know, writing poetry. So when I wasn't able to really say how I felt, I put everything to paper. Mm, okay. Who are your top three producers that you are working with right now? Uh, right now, I really um, love this guy named Batman. Um, he produces a lot of really dope stuff. Um, NK Music is really jazzy and soulful. I like his stuff as well. Um, I'm trying to think, who else have I worked with? Jeez, I've worked with so many people. <laughs> oh, gosh. I know I'm, I'm leaving off one. I know I'm leaving off one. 
My brain is going blank right now. Uh, oh, Tony Sway. Tony, Tony Sway is real good. Okay. What are your long-term goals as being an artist? My long-term goals is just really to put out good quality music. You know, I, I take my time with my music. So that's why it's usually a delay between my next record and the next one because I'm such a perfectionist. It's probably because I have a Virgo moon. I scrutinize my records over and over before I even release them. Uh, so that's really my main goal is just to put out quality music that can be a soundtrack to somebody's life. I'm trying to help somebody make a baby. Oh, 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 okay. You want people to make these babies out here? Huh? Yes. <laughs> Baby making music, okay, okay. Absolutely. Hey, you know what we? And it's so crazy because we're kind of actually missing that in today's music. You know, we I are. Mean, I remember when I was growing up as a kid, we had all that baby making music, and right. uh, it seemed like it just vanished. Yeah, I think now a lot of times with the music that people would consider baby making music is basically telling you, I'm going to do this to you, I'm going to do that, instead of kind of leaving a little bit for the imagination so you can kind of go where you want to go with the music, how it makes you feel. Sometimes it's like, yeah, I'm going to do this and that and third to you. Okay, great. Thank you for telling me everything that you're going to do to me. <laughs> instead of just letting the mood, you know, be set and going with the flow. Yeah. How do you determine what to change in your music when you're recording? Um, I tend to do a lot of my prep work before I get in the studio because uh, I don't like to waste my engineer's time. I like to try to knock out as much as I can. But I usually go with a feeling. If it doesn't feel right or it doesn't sound right to me, then I'll change it or I may – you know, change the lyrics. Most times it's just changing the lyrics or changing how I deliver it. Okay. So I try to do most of my prep work so I have a good foundation of what I want to do with the record. Okay. What sets you, what makes you different from the artist that's out today doing their thing? Um, I think it's my vibe. The vibe that I give off. You know, it's, much, it's very different. Um, my voice is very different as well. So I would say my vibe and just the type of music that I make, you know, is a lot different from what you normally would hear, you know, from an R&B artist. And that's primarily when I'm making music, that's how I'm thinking when I'm in the studio. Okay, what's out now? What's missing? And what can I make to fill the void? Okay, okay. What what does generosity mean to you as an artist? Mm, I mean, it could be sharing a post, um, let me know what you think of my record, um, if you have any criticisms, coming to a show. Like, you know, we always think generosity has to be financial, but it doesn't always have to be in my case, you know, because I'm looking to grow as an artist, so just – supporting, coming out to a show, saying, hey, I love your music, it's dope. dope. That's what that's what I look for. If you buy my record, great. If you don't, that's fine, too. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, if there's something, is there anything that you're doing today that you wish you would have had known about years ago? Oh, wow. Mm, that's a lot. I, that's a lot I wish I knew <laughs> in my 20s versus now in my 30s. Yeah. I could go down a long list, but I would say self-care. Mm. I wish I knew years ago how important self-care would be. Because yeah. if you're not taking care of yourself, then you can't take care of others. You can't give your all to your craft or whatever you're doing. So you got to yeah. take care of yourself and make sure your mental, spiritual, physical is good first before you try to tackle anything else. Man, I preach, preach. That's, that's big because I think a lot of people tend to forget about self-care. You know what I'm saying? And uh, 
you're right, man. A lot of people need to put that first. And there's some folks that truly and really don't, man. And if and they... it comes back to bite you. It's going to come back to bite you. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Have you ever said no to an opportunity? I have. And why? Um, usually if I don't, my gut will tell me whether or not, okay, go with it or not go with it. Sometimes it may be a self-care issue where I'm like, look, uh, my energy is not the best. I'm going to have to pass on it. Or the risk and the reward doesn't add up. Like, okay, what am I going to get in return for what I'm doing? Uh, so it just depends on the situation. Okay, okay. All right, we got three more before we let you slide out of here. Now, I don't know if you can uh, answer this first one. Some people say they can. Some people say they can't. <laughs> you know, we understand. You know, some people have a significant of it, so they can't answer this. But we, we're going to try anyway. If you had the opportunity to date anybody for a publicity stunt, who would the individual be? <laughs> Oh man. Um Oh man. That's a hard question. Mm. That's a hard one because who I would want to date is already taken, but in my mind, man, give me an opportunity. Yep. Mhm. Mm I'm doing it. Yeah, who who is it? Even if they take it, huh? Who, who who is this individual? We need know The Rock. I've always I've been into wrestling, and The Rock has always been. I got a wrestling crush on Dwayne Rock Johnson. I just, I don't, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not him. <laughs> the Rock. Number two. What is your favorite dish? What do you enjoy eating the most? Oh, I love pizza. Pizza. Okay. I love pizza. I have pizza every day if I want to. But I cannot because I got to watch my figure. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, number three, who is your favorite designer of choice if you had to choose? Oh, my favorite designer of choice. Mm. I'm a sneakerhead. So, I mean, I love clothes, but I really love sneakers more. I'm a Jordan girl. Jordan, can't go wrong with the J. Can't go wrong with the J. Retro 13 to be exact. No. No man. Uh-uh. You better get those sixes on them phones in your life. <laughs> talk about the sixes on them phones in your life. <laughs> nah, it's all to the good. Um, how do you feel about social media? What are your pros and cons with social media today? I mean, with social media nowadays, you have such a wide reach of people. But then again, you can get too consumed with it. Like, you're on it all the time. Like, that's the, all you're worried about is, I got to post this, I got to do this, I got to reach out to this. So it's trying to find a fine balance where you're not losing too much of yourself with social media, but using it, you know, you know, using it to the best of your abilities without losing yourself on it. So sometimes I have to put my phone down because I'll be on <laughs> all day trying to research and reach out to people. I'm like, okay, it's time to put it down. It's time to go to sleep. Yeah, hey, hey. The worst thing is when you go check that screen time, you'd be like, 10 hours. What was I was on here that much? Yeah. I need to pipe down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Well, no doubt, man. We appreciate you getting on with us. Go ahead and let everybody know how they can follow you on all your social platforms. Well, yes, most definitely y'all can follow me on IG um, at m.i.a.therapsidist. Um, Twitter is at m.i.a.therapsidist. Um, I tend to be more on IG, so if you definitely send me a message, I'm definitely going to respond. I am not shy. <laughs> Just don't come with no foolishness in my DMs. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, better quit all that foolishness in the DM. Don't, don't come with don't come with the don't don't come with the foolishness. But yeah, I'm I'm pretty talkative. You know, I'll chat with people. So yeah, reach out. You know, let me know what you think about my music. You know, I definitely appreciate it. 
All right, there it is, no doubt, man. We appreciate you getting on with us this evening. We wish you mad success in all your endeavors and keep going. All right, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It was lovely talking to you. You too. Peace. All right, peace. DJ Sly, D DJ Sly, Tay. DJ Sly, D DJ Sly, Tay. DJ. Sly.